Welcome back, if you just returned. Um, our second speaker is Theo Botma, and he's talking about invisible lexicography in CPD writing systems. I am really looking forward to that, and you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Uh, my co-author is Dani Prinsler, and oh, I need the little... With, uh, thank you. That's the laser pointer. Oh, that's a little. I think this one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Good. Thank you. And my co-author is Danny Prinsler. He's the uh, expert on Saperi, so if there are any questions about Saperi, please ask him or email him uh, to ask him or ask Maurice who sits in front here. Uh, at least he will be able to give a more informative guesstimate than I would be able to give because unfortunately I'm not a Saperi expert in any which way. Dani sends his uh, best wishes to everybody at the conference and he's very sorry that he cannot be here. So what we're talking about today is briefly description of two writing systems that uh, he has been developing with the help of a number of people. Uh, Sabedi Helper and the Copulative Decision Tree. We're looking at the functionalities and a couple of screen captures, looking at the invisible lexicography underlying these systems or how lexicography and rules of lexicography are being used in these systems looking at possible extensions, and then a brief conclusion. Lots of research is being done on writing assistance, mostly for well-researched, uh, resource-rich languages, very often only for one language, but sometimes for multiple languages. Uh, however, Sepedi is, we heard about lesser resourced languages from Elon. I think it's what's worse than lesser resourced uh, languages in the world, uh, uh, language of South Southern Africa or South Africa, and Dani and colleagues uh, have developed two programs, the so-called Sepedia Helper and the copulative, copulative Decision Tree. Both of these were demonstrated at earlier ELEX conferences, but we will have to give just a brief account of what they are and then show how the lexicographic rules are underlying the whole process. By the way, user studies have been done on both of these systems and they have been found to be very successful, basically students. So uh, students learning Saperi, and I think that's a rather important issue because as far as we're concerned, these writing assistants uh, function not only as writing assistants, but also as computer-assisted language learning tools, CAL tools. Uh, so there's a slight difference between the traditional writing system, where you're typing a text in English and it suggests a word for you, or it changes your grammar for you a little bit and so on, as opposed to in this case, where the idea is to, in the end, construct a proper sentence in Saperi, but to be able to learn what is happening, not only in the background, but what are the underlying language, ru uh, language rules and so on that have to be taken into account. Uh, so the invisible lexicographic strategies play a, a major underlying role. Both systems help users to write grammatically correct Sepedi. They provide different levels of drill down so that whoever is using the system can find uh, reasons why certain selections have been made. So it's not only A should be followed by B. Yes, it can do that. But why is B following A? Or if I have said A is being followed by C, why am I not correct? How can the system correct me? And then the possibility of drilling down to get to the actual language rules. So NLP could solve these problems in terms of translation and in terms of writing assistance quite easily. But that's not the only intention of these programs. They are learning mechanisms for students learning 
uh, Sepedi as a second or third or fifth language. Uh, both our prototypes should be developed further, but I think in both Dani's case and in my case, uh, retirement has come before completion. So we're looking for anybody else who might be interested in working on these writing systems. And we feel that the principles that we use in these can be adapted and adopted for future uh, improvements. So the functionalities in a nutshell. The CPD helper is intended as a step-by-step -step building assistant aimed at complementing the existing knowledge of the user. All of this is very important. Step-by-step, -step, you start off with a word, you go to the next word and the next one. And the user needs to have some form of knowledge of the language. So it's not for the totally uh, person with no background in the language, but someone who has been taught at least the basics, the rudimentary parts of the language. Uh, the core of the superior helper lies in the build-up facility where the user is prompted to provide a subject noun, a verb, and optionally an object noun or nouns, and based on a selection. So I'll show you an example just now. Uh, the software then helps with the concords and all the other small words that need to be inserted to make this a grammatical sentence, uh, which is quite complex in Sepedi. Uh, it combines user knowledge, as I've said, with production support. The user is involved in interactive text production of verbs in the different moods in Sepedi. But there's also the option of confirmation, uh, so that whatever the user then uh, constructs can be verified uh, based on a corpus for a direct match or on similar grammatical examples within a corpus. To, best, to the best of my knowledge, this hasn't been implemented fully yet, but yeah, we shall see. Anyway, this is the basic screen. I'm going to go to the next one, which just gives you a slightly bigger of the top half. So you start off by deciding, let's go to the next screen, which tense it will be, is the positive or negative sentence, you choose a subject noun and so on, and you can fill in these things as you progress sequentially through the system. Uh, I'll get back to this later on in terms of the drill down and the help files and so on. A couple of decision tree functionalities in a nutshell as well. According to the uh, Grammarians of Sepedi, the copulative is the most complex construction in the language. And in a typical grammar book, uh, I think 34 pages or something has been devoted to that, which means that it is quite complex. Uh, and the average first year student and very often the uh, native speaker of the language also doesn't know exactly how these things work. The intention of the copulative decision tree is to help one through binary choices to select the correct form. Uh, so it navigates the user through two main types of copulatives via three semantic relations, namely identifying, descriptive and associative, through different verbal moods, and finally, through the nominal class system. And that's more than enough to drive anyone crazy, so I'm very glad I didn't study Sepedi. Uh, so the copulative decision tree looks something like this. You start off here. Yep. With a copulative, you can split between the two types of copulative, and then if you decide to use the state of copulative, you have the three types of copulative here. And then you can choose whether you want the indicative, situative, or relative mode. And if you take the indicative mode, you can say, okay, do I want it in the first and second person or in the third person? Uh, and based on these choices, eventually you get to the option, okay, if you've taken not the first or second person, but the third person, you've got 18 nine noun classes from which uh, the noun could come. And if you take the first class, which is for humans, uh, 
you have a positive or a negative form of the copulative. So that makes it rather a complicated thing. But you will also see here then that in each case where you can make the choice, and you can see that I think on the next slide, now it's a little bit later on, uh, there's the option to drill down to get more information on how this actually works and what's the underlying context. So in this paper, invisible lexicography is more broadly interpreted uh, as including all the lexicographically relevant aspects of a complex grammar, typically catered for in a good dictionary of Sepedi or a good grammar of Sepedi. So whether it's paper-based with front matter, middle matter, or back matter, uh, online as pop-up windows, as references to various types of resources and so on. So the user can always move out to different types of information. Uh, and I think this is very important here, namely, uh, you can hover with the cursor over everything or you can drill down to get to more information if need be. So, uh, the invisible lexicography then provides guidance to the user and the programmer, but we're prim primarily looking at the user. On the other hand, the programmer also needed these rules on the basis of which to do the actual programming. Uh, translation or guidance on translation equivalence, the semantics of verbal modes, morphology of the verbal modes, nominal system, syntactic order, and part of speech indication represented here as underlying invisible part of speech markup. And of course, then the copulative system if you uh, have a copulative verb. I'm not going to go to, through any of these in detail because I just show you that there are, oops, sorry, uh, there are different tables uh, providing translation equivalents, but also in this case, the noun classes, noun class one, noun class two. You could see here Muna is the singular for man and Banna is the plural, men. And here you have tags it for possessive construction at the bottom. So this is all encoded in the dictionary so that the dictionary can make use of, of the, sorry, recommender system can make use of these uh, content issues or content uh, material uh, in suggesting uh, solutions. Uh, it helps you further if you try to do, uh, create a sentence in Sepedi. Uh, as default, it would give you an indicative sentence. But if you're not quite sure what the other options are, you can just uh, click on the indicative or hover with your mouse on the indicative, and it gives you the two, four, six, eight type of sentences that you can actually construct in Sepedi uh, and what the basic meanings are. If you want to have help with the indicative, you can drill down further. And this gives you, as you can see, a fairly complex summary of the different uh, uh, constructions in the indicative in Sepedi. Uh, Below that, there is a further level of abstraction, typically for the, for the programmer, to ensure that he or she understands exactly how this should be programmed. Uh, the users could drill down to this as well, but typically the user would stop at the previous level. Uh, one example from uh, uh, building a possessive construction, so the user is prompted for a possessor noun, which you can type either in Sepedi or in English. So if you use Sepedi, obviously you already know the word. If you're uh, a beginner student and you don't know the word, you can give the English and it will automatically find it in the dictionary. So in this case, uh, the possessor noun, Puko. Uh, the user is prompted for a possession, possession noun, Munna. It will provide the correct concord between the two is ya, and it ends up with puku yamuna, the book of the man. Uh, there you see the 18 classes of the noun, which is quite complex for anybody who is not used to the uh, African languages or 
in the West traditionally called the Bantu languages, which is not the term used in South Africa anymore. Uh, this should have been before the preceding slide, sorry for this. This just gives you the word order construction, how the system in the end constructs the possessive. Uh, and in the word list, you do find all these different uh, morphological uh, part of speech markup uh, combined with the words and also combined with the meanings. Uh, Here's the drill down option for the copulative. You can see in this case, hovered over this, uh, there it says it's the negative, chase, and it gives you a sentence, muna chase muruti, the man is not a priest, or Peter is not a priest. Uh, and you can see it suggested based on this how you should actually do the construction. Uh, this is supported by a roadmap where the detail is provided and you can drill down further to get to a, an expl explanatory summary and further drill down options to get more detail. Issue is the information is on demand and you don't have to necessarily uh, click on things uh, if you're not interested in the detail. Uh, there's an, Roadmap 3, where everything, all of this is set out in more detail, again, more for the programmer. Verification, the basic objective is to provide the user with reassurance that whatever he or she has constructed is actually correct. So the idea would be to verify this against a superior corpus, and Dani has constructed a very huge Sepedi corpus throughout the years. Uh, so there is lots of material against which it can be verified. However, if there is no exact uh, uh, equivalent or parallel, uh, at least the system could hopefully offer a variety of near matches which could also serve as confirmation. So if you have a noun verb noun, uh, it will find similar constructions in the corpus that could support what you have been doing. You can look at this example, verification example of the copulative. Uh, concordance lines from the corpus, you are Lego, uh, where this occurs. And unfortunately, Danny forgot to give me the translation of this. So, uh, then I will reach with the UCAN. Uh, and then also typical collocates that occur uh, with uh, this combination. So, further research. Both systems are prototypes and should be further developed. But at least they provide some support. Both uh, The current dictionary of Superior Albury is limited. Only a couple of thousand words in it. Uh, but it's not an enriched uh, dictionary or lexicon or lexical database, whatever you want to call it. So the database is very limited, very uh, yeah, information poor. And if this were to be developed to a much more complex database, that would definitely uh, improve uh, the power of this as a learning tool. So research should be done how more semantic details will be enriching. Both systems should be integrated into a word processor for easy access. I know Dani has developed something in which you have an icon on your Word, Microsoft Word uh, interface, which you can click on and it would then take you direct, directly to this. It's not fully integrated, but it is partially integrated. Uh, but that would make it very useful for the average uh, writer of Sepedi sentences. The computer-aided language learning aspects should be further developed. Uh, further drill down options to more detailed descriptions or outer text and so on. Uh, that would be very important to add eventually. And also the possibility of AI should be uh, investigated very de in much more detail. So in conclusion, in the last minute, 
Uh, user studies have revealed that students learning Sepedi find the Sepedi Helper a very useful tool. Donny has done uh, with colleagues uh, a couple of uh, studies where they had students using these tools and students gave very positive feedback. Both systems are de facto computer aided language learning systems as users can learn by doing and check their results. Build down options for more detailed explanations, links to detailed descriptions or other text and so on is very useful, but it is always on demand, so there's never an information overload where you are then confronted with information that you don't need or are not yet up to, to uh, understand. And we feel that the usability of the next generation superior writing assistance depended to a very large extent on an enriched lexicographic database and further technological innovations. And that is my story. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Um, are there any questions? Yes. Hi, I've been following your work on uh, <laughs> these types of writing systems from afar for a long time and I generally like the idea of having a um, you know a writing tool that or a writing assistant that unlike systems like Grammarly which basically analyze what the user has written this kind of relies on the user telling the systems kind of symbol symbolically what the user means by selecting from menus and then it generates the text so I think it's a very interesting idea and I've been hearing from you for a long time that you've been building prototypes. I'm thinking, do you have an interest in developing this, let's say into a final product or commercializing this or has anybody expressed an interest in doing that? Sort of making the final step and actually turning it into a product which has a name and an, ide and an identity and people go somewhere and use it or even buy it or something like that? Yes, and no, and I have no clue. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I think Danny would love to do it. Uh, it's obviously not my part. Uh, he is the, the brains behind all of this in terms of the uh, grammatical knowledge and so on. But as with most things that are not commercially really uh, viable in the sense that there are lots of people going to buy the systems and so on uh, to get a software company to be interested to build something like this. Nah, I don't think that's going to happen. Not easily. Unless you can find somebody with very deep pockets and who is really interested in uh, African languages, grammar and lexicography and so on. So, uh, yes, there is, I think, it would be fantastic to be able to, to develop this further, but I don't think there's a really commercial viability in developing, in developing anything like this. Uh, and uh, programmers are unfortunately expensive. Uh, the programmers in these two systems, I suppose I have to confess, were Donnie's sons and my son. Uh, and uh, family work for free uh, or because dad asks him to. Uh, so uh, I don't think they will really be able to, to carry on uh, working on this. But if anybody is interested, let's talk. Or email Dani, there's his email address. Thanks. There is still time for one short question and an equally short answer. Jill Maurice, try. <clears throat> um, Theo, it's a tricky question. Oh, um, what else can I expect from you? <laughs> yeah, um, you? You see, at the time of Bloomfield, um, lexicography, dictionaries were seen as an addendum to the grammar. Then came Cobalt. We revolutionized, changed that. We brought structure in it by looking at the usage, mapping meaning onto the usage. So the def uh, in the definitions, you have grammar. Yeah. This tool... We are at a lexicography conference. Is this grammar or lexical analysis? I think it's a combination of the two, but I'm not talking off the top of my head without having thought about it. Uh, it's 
a lexicographic database that is enriched by semantic, grammatical, or semantic, phonetic, uh, and uh, uh, syntactic properties, which can enable the user to be supported to get to a fully fledged uh, sentence or paragraph or whatever, which means that it the, the interaction is between all these components. And I don't think any of the components can be negated or its importance can be uh, relegated to a lower importance. So I don't think you can say it's a grammatical system or a syntactic system because it uses syntax, but it's not syntax. It's not a dictionary. It's not a lexicographic system, but it uses a lexicographic system to enable to uh, come up with the sentences, which means that you do need an enriched semantic database or a lexicographic database to enable you to uh, do what anybody would like to do with a good dictionary, namely get to the correct meaning or the correct sense in a given context without having to flounder around between many, many different meanings that are possibly not relevant. And that's a long answer to what probably wasn't the answer you wanted. No, it is what I wanted to hear. Um, I want just to point out to the audience who may not be familiar with the Bantu language, this is actually the, the equivalent of the Cobalt Revolution, but then for the Bantu languages. We have this, you know it, two traditions for Bantu languages, word tradition versus stem tradition. And they're always fighting, how should we do it this way or that way? Now, um, by this, using this approach, you basically merge the two and have solved the issue in a well, digital it environment. Works for Cipedia. I don't know whether it's going to work for, for Isi Zulu or Isi Kolza. Right? But we need researchers who would like to play around with these things. Thank you very much. Thank you.